this computer. There's the lady. <laughs> Okay, guys, so welcome to my musicology tutorial here. Today we are so lucky because we have Paul, who is the husband of a piano teacher, um, an online piano teacher, and he has so kindly donated his time to help answer all of your tech questions. So what I'm going to do first is just walk everybody through musicology, and then we'll get into um, the more nitty gritty of tech with Paul. So musicology, as you guys know, um, I think a lot of the people here are already users. So thanks for coming. Um, it's a rather revolutionary product. It's pretty disruptive. And um, the very first video conferencing app with completely collaborative and interactive tools designed specifically for children and piano pedagogy. So that's where I was going with this. I'm a piano teacher too, for those of you that don't know. And um, I took the risk during this pandemic to um, just, uh, you know, de develop something that was so needed in our industry and um, that was child friendly as well and piano focused. So right now we have multi device support. Um, it works best on Chrome, although Safari recently did an update and it seems to work on Safari now, minus a few little details that um, we can iron out down the road. But um, for the most part, it, it does work on Safari, which is great. Um, but Chrome would be the definitely the best experience. Um, you can download the app if you're on an iPad or an iPhone. So you can download that from the App Store. It's under Musicology Online. If you're on um, an Android device, it does work on most Android devices on Chrome. So we've had pretty good success with that, although there are hundreds of Android devices. So it's hard to say for sure if it's going to work on every Android. You're probably better to stick to um, a laptop or a desktop or um, an iPad or iPhone. So like I said, we are currently configured for Chrome. And what we aim for with Musicology is to keep it as simple as possible. So to limit the need for extra accessories, I know that's something that teachers have gotten used to doing over the pandemic with Zoom is, um, you know, to make it work somewhat for music, add microphones and tons of cameras and headphones and all sorts of things. But um, me personally, I don't like using all of that stuff. I like to keep it simple. And we all know that our students aren't going out and getting all of these things as well. So you certainly do not need all of these devices, but you are more than welcome to use them if you wish. So Musicology has all the tools needed to engage kids 12 and under. This was really important for me. Um, that's my son there in the video. So you can see he loves Musicology. He says that he works for Musicology all the time because he was featured in one of our advertisements, <laughs> paid in candy. Um, uh, he has his lessons on Musicology as well. He's my number one beta tester. Um, even his play dates are done in Musicology. So it's extremely kid friendly. Everything is um, um, act, it's teacher controlled, but it's student enabled. So the student can access everything that the teacher can, but the teacher can lock them out. Uh, you can see that we have a little lock button up here in the right hand corner. And that's for the teacher to lock your student out if they're getting too crazy with their button pushing. It is also incredibly useful for older students. So we have high quality full duplex audio. And what that means is that um, you get this kind of like layered sound, like a phone call. So Zoom goes through a server. It um, goes from teacher to server to student. It's like a many to many platform. And that's why you have all of those audio cutouts it, just because it takes more time for the audio to travel. Plus, it's like a decade old, so the foundation might not be as technologically up to date as um, today's current foundations. So we've built Musicology on a foundation specifically for music. It will accept all frequencies. It's very natural to teach. It um, resembles um, very much an in-person lesson. So it's going to decrease your exhaustion. You can direct your students while they're playing. You don't have to wait till they're done their song before you interrupt them, you can sing over them. Um, it, it's really great for that. 
We have a whiteboard for theory practice. Um, it, they can upload their theory sheets if they're doing some homework outside of the lesson during the week. It's very easy to use. They just take a picture of their theory and then drag it over to their student room. And it will be there for you to access and mark if you like before their next lesson. We have a MIDI keyboard to show examples, and this is available on our web app, not the iPad, but I imagine the most teachers are probably teaching off of their desktop anyways. Um, we have screen share for YouTube clips and research, so you can share your audio with the using the Google Chrome tab, and um, you can also share your iPad as well and play music games. So our top features are the whiteboard, the file upload, the grand staff, and I'm gonna walk you through all of these, the virtual piano keyboard and screen share. So first I'm going to show you this little video. Okay, so there's our happy student and teacher. This is our playable keyboard. This is demonstrating the iPad, but it's very similar to the web app. So the keys highlight on both sides of the screen. There's draggable, so you can move around. The numbers are all in solfege colors, super kid friendly. The whiteboard's collaborative. So this kind of replaces um, what teachers have been using for screen share on Zoom quite often. You can do this on the whiteboard instead. You can annotate on your music and um, draw all sorts of things. There's no extra settings that you need to enable on either side. It's just automatic. This is the web browser on the iPad. So this is how we worked around screen share because iOS doesn't allow for screen share. So it's just a working Google browser. You can take a screenshot of something and then you can upload it to the whiteboard and work on a sheet of something together. And then we have our great emojis. The kids love those. So here's the file upload. So what I've done is I opened up my camera roll, taken a picture of a file and I've named it and it gets placed on the whiteboard and it gets so stored in the student's room too so that they can access it anytime during the week or in the next lesson. So this is our grand staff. All of the notes are movable and collaborative on both sides. The teachers can move them, the students can move them. A lot of fun for making up your own music games. As you can see, super simple to use. And lastly, um, let's talk about security because that is an important thing to us. So we are COPPA compliant and GDPR compliant, and you're probably wondering what that is. So COPPA is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act or rule. <laughs> Excuse me. And what that means is that we do not take any of your students' information. So they don't need to sign up for anything. All they do is have a code that you create, and then they punch it in for their lesson time. GDPR means that we do not collect data from any of the teachers either. So everything is third party. Um, when you are, let me get rid of that. When you are logging in and signing up, you do have an option to opt into our newsletter. Uh, we send out pretty helpful blogs once a week, usually on Monday mornings, and um, they feature normally questions that are getting asked a lot. So that is that, and I am going to now share, um, there we go. I'm going to share my screen. You guys can see all that, right? Okay. So here's the web app, is app.musicology.ca. What I'm doing is I'm just signing in. Okay, so here we are on the web app now. And just feel free to interrupt me if you have any questions about anything. I'm sure that if you have a question, then somebody else probably is wondering the same thing. 
So we get this pop-up tutorial. Um, if you want to find it later, it's this little icon over here, the question mark. And it, this will just take you to your FAQ page on the website if you have any questions about anything. You can build student rooms. This will take you to a video. What devices can be used and our YouTube tutorials. And then our Facebook group for Team Musicology. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to connect to a call and let's do um, this one. <coughs> okay, so what it's doing now is it is uh, just waiting for the call on the other end. And the reason why I've connected to a call now is because in order for the whiteboard to work, you need to be connected to a call because the whiteboard is connected to each student's individual room. Now, if I want to end this call and go to a new lesson, then I press end and then I open up my student room and click on another student room. All the student rooms are built in the teacher portal, which is where you register. That's portal.musicology.ca. So I'll just walk through all these buttons here. So you have your question mark one. That's where all of the links are. This is the gear icon. And this is where your audio input source is, your audio output, your video input source. So anything that your OS will accept, then Musicology will accept too. But you have to make sure that it's all plugged in before you log on. We have the noise suppression and echo cancellation checked off as a default. Um, I would just not touch those unless you feel like playing around with different settings. The auto gain is more for vocalists if you're like singing opera or something like that. But most vocal teachers have microphones to control their gain. So then we have our emoji buttons. We change these all seasonally. They're large and animated. When you're connected to a call, you'll have a little lock button over here that you can lock your student out from getting um, too emoji happy. There is a mute microphone, a disable camera. This is the toggle video options. Whenever you see a plus sign, it's going to display more icons. So we've just kind of tried to keep everything tidy on the screen and out of the way. So the first one is the pop out remote user video. And this is probably the most confusing button of them all. But what it is for is screen share. So when you screen share something, you're clicking on your entire screen. And then if you want to see your student, you can click the pop out remote user button and that will just make your student's video kind of float around the screen with you and they can come along on your screen sharing journey. Your video down here is also movable. So you can slide that around out of the way. You can reverse the image too. And then this little G button, you can slide it back into place. This is your camera switch button. So I have just one camera. I have an overhead camera on my keyboard. You can hook up as many cameras, <coughs> excuse me, as you want. Um, it's compatible with ManyCam and OBS too. So again, whatever your OOS will accept, then Musicology will. And then this one will enlarge your um, picture and make it smaller. And this one here is the hide local video. That'll just get rid of my video if I don't want to look at myself while I'm teaching. This is the full screen one. So then down here, we have our collapsible menu. This is our whiteboard. Oh, it's we're going crazy in the last time I was in here, it looks like. So it's very easy to use. Um, you have this little musical palette, or um, not musical palette, uh, drawing palette. You can minimize it by pressing that bar there to get it out of the way. You can remove and you can redo drawings. And if you hover over everything, it'll tell you what each of the icons do. And we have this slider here, so I can enlarge my mouse. I can change the color. Just make sure you click OK, and then the color will change. And we have an eraser so that you can erase it too. This is the select button. So this is fun for playing games. 
you can select an image, move it over, and then drop it somewhere. This one is the line. So you can build straight lines, have your student put in the correct amount of lines for a staff. There is a square for highlighting passages of music, a circle for circling areas. And then if I want to delete all these images, I'm going to press the trash can over here. So this toolbar menu is hidden as well with this little icon as on the side. To lock your students out from drawing on the whiteboard, you can click this lock button. The clipboard will remove the drawings, but not the image. So now I've clicked this little music note. I'm going to resize it. It's just a stamp of our grand staff image on um, the iPad. So I'm resizing it to the screen by pulling this arrow down here and clicking add to background. And then now what I can do is I can draw on it and my student can draw on it too. And then I can give them a star for doing a great job. If I want to save this image now to my student's room, then I just press this floppy disk icon and I name the file and then it'll save to my student's room. All files are saved in this three dot icon. So now if I want to put a new image up, I can go to this three dot icon, click on an image that I had previously loaded. So you can load images in the teacher portal by clicking on your student's room, or you can do it when you're in a lesson by just dragging the file over. So now um, the image, the music that my student is working on is on the screen for us. So this is different than Zoom. Zoom, you would probably do screen share and um, share the images, but we've kind of made it a little bit more intuitive. So all of your items can be saved in here. As you can see, I have a lot in the student room. I should probably delete some, but um, it was pretty easy to do, just dragging everything over, naming it, and then you only have to do that once until you delete it, and then it's always there. And you'll have a little square of your student kind of floating around there. And uh, so you can see your student while you're teaching and they can see you. So that is the whiteboard. Does anybody have any questions about the whiteboard? No, fantastic. It looks like I'm getting mm -hmm. better at this. I have a question. Yeah. Um, yesterday I was in the whiteboard and I could not get the drawing tool to respond and neither could my student. So I tried to log back in. I imagine that's the first thing to do. Um, and, and it still wouldn't work. So what do you suggest? So when you were, you were in the whiteboard and then you pressed on the buttons and you went to draw and there was nothing coming up? Yeah, yeah. Um, on your side? On my side and apparently on my student's side, I think... I was, I think I had the staff open and I was trying to put notes on the staff. Are you sure that you were pressing, that you were on the pencil icon and not uh, the eraser or something? By yeah, hand? yeah. Okay, I know, sorry, so silly question, but it happens mm -hmm. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, What, you were on a laptop? Um, Yeah, I was on my Mac. Oh, okay, on Chrome? Yep. Okay, Um, and your internet was good? uh i well my internet was good i don't know about theirs but mine was um so everything the image the drawing is um sent by data packets but um that doesn't affect yours so, so if your um, internet is fine then um it should be all right um mm -hmm. i would just double check that the pencil icon was definitely on um, mm -hmm. maybe give it a try after this call and um, sometimes if you don't turn your computer off all the time, then Chrome is like a data hog, so it can slow things down quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And um, we can touch on that after when um, with Paul, I'm sure that he has some ideas burning through his brain right now that he wants to shout out. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Thank you.
Hello. So the next one is our grand staff icon. So this has your playable piano. It's also MIDI compatible too. And you can change to rainbow keys. You can change the volume here. You can change the color of the keys. So the students like doing this. They can pick whatever colors that they want. Um, and then we have this uh, another flying music note. So this is our color pop palette. And you can drag notes around and your student can drag them around as well. So there's lots of options here. You have numbers you can place on the keys. Um, we often get asked where the ledger lines are. So the ledger lines are in the green forte symbol and the bar lines as well. So just have fun, you know, click through them. It's not gonna explode. Just click a whole bunch of buttons and um, you'll find that your student will probably do the same thing. And then over here is another keyboard icon. So this opens up your instrument. This is where you can see if your MIDI is hooked up. So the MIDI is actually um, pretty easy to hook up. Um, you can just have like any cheap piano for a keyboard for demonstration purposes only. If um, you wanna maybe use your acoustic and then um, have just like a, a smaller keyboard, you just have to plug it into your computer and um, it's actually just a printer cable. So if, um, if you don't have anything lying, if you don't think you have a MIDI cable, I'd check your printer. <laughs> Rebecca? Yeah. Do those come in different uh, lengths? Cables? Yeah. yeah, you can get any size. Yeah. So you could get one for 20 feet or whatever. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Same with like the Ethernet cables, too. You can get like all sorts of different lengths. I think yeah. somebody just commented on our team musicology a while ago that um, they, they bought a 200 foot <laughs> um, Ethernet cable by accident. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, but if you just search on like Amazon and um, just put in like MIDI cable, they give you a whole bunch of different options. Okay. I know I that um, I've always been told to don't get anything less than 25 feet, okay. even if you're only three feet apart. <laughs> Seems um, unnecessary to me, but. Yeah, for some reason, my mic wasn't working back when you were demonstrating the, the blackboard. And I was wondering what size a uh, page was that you, you pulled in? Was that like a landscape from a, a book? Oh, the page that I pulled? Yeah, the sample page that you brought in there and we circled some things on it. Yeah, so that, um, that was just a screenshot actually that I had taken and um, just uploaded it. But yeah, you can take it in landscape mode or in portrait mode. And you just have to like resize it. I think most books um, for little kids are usually in landscape mode. Have you ever had that palette thing be in the way of what you wanted to fill in? Oh yeah, on the whiteboard? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can minimize that. So that's this little bar here. Mm -hmm. And then you can just press it and it'll go down and it'll be out of the way. Okay, so you can't move it around on the page. No, no, not yet. Yeah, hopefully that future release, that'd be a great thing. Got it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's the grand staff. And then if you click on anything, it, it'll turn green and you can delete that item. If you want to delete everything, then you press the trash can. Now, if you have your MIDI keyboard hooked up, then I would suggest muting either your piano or your on screen so that you don't get a doubling of sounds because otherwise you're going to get the sound of your piano playing and then the sound of um, the keyboard screen playing. So the mute button for that is just up here. And then a screen share, can you guys see that? Can you see the screen share window? Yeah. Hold okay. Oh, no. No, it's still waiting for students. No. Oh yeah, I don't know why I won't show when I try to screen share. Maybe if I, let me try something. 
It doesn't show that image when I screen share and zoom, and I don't know why. Hmm. You know, and now it's not going to let me screen share because I'm not connected. I'll try one more time. Can you see it now? No. No. Maybe you need the other person on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, so basically what this is, is like it's a square that pops up and it shows my computer screen and you're going to click on your computer screen if you want to share your entire screen. Um, and then there's another tab for window. So you can click on window if you just want to share like um, the window of an app. And then there's the Chrome tab if you want to share um, just a tab and not your entire screen. And this is where your share audio is. Now, if you want to screen share, um, your iPad and you are on an Apple device, what you will do there is just pretend that I press screen share. So I've screen shared on Musicology. And now what I'm doing is I'm going to, oh wait, you can't see my screen now, can you? Can you see my screen? It still says waiting for a student. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? Cause I think I didn't share my entire screen. I think that's why. Okay, hold on. I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to share my entire screen. Desktop. Okay. So can you see it now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you share your entire screen and then you would press this one. Window. This will just open up a little window. Chrome tab, this is where you share your audio. So then you can pick your YouTube and you can share your audio here. Cool. And then pretend I'm still screen sharing and I have this game that I want to play with my student. So I'm on an iMac, so I'm going to go and open QuickTime. If you are on a Windows device, you can download an app called um, lonely screen it's free i know it has an awkward name but um this will allow you to cast your ipad from your windows device um through screen share and it's very user friendly it's you literally just download it and then it gives you the instructions so now i'm in quick time here you see it at the top i'm doing new movie recording i have my ipad plugged into my computer just because it's always better to be plugged into something. And now you see my iPad. So if it's not coming up for you, you just click on this little drop down menu and then you'll see your iPad come up here. And then you can share whatever you want there. Landscape. And um, it'll actually pick up your sounds as well because it'll come through the microphone. So this is great for sharing those um, sight reading games and all sorts of things. And then for, oh geez. Does that interact, Rebecca? Started playing. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, as you are displaying that game from your iPad, is the student able to control that or is it just you? Yeah, it's just you. We don't have remote control settings built into screen share at this point, but it's definitely on the list for a future release. Okay, just curious. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, we're, I mean, we're a new platform that's like massive amounts of technology and development <laughs> that needs to go in. So um, we'll get there eventually, but um, it is what it is right now. And so far, this is pretty great. We've got um, a ton of fun features that you can play with in the meantime. So for all of you that teach guitar, if anybody does here, this is our guitar feature. It's the same as um, the grand staff. You can switch to ukulele as well. And it has your same color pop palette, but it has some um, guitar notes in there as well for sharing tab. And chords? Are there chords? Um, well, you can build chords. Yep. So you can right. go C, C, G, D, E. Well, there's not like letters in there. No, but you can build chords like this and then you can draw it in. Right. I don't know. I'm not a guitar teacher, so I have no idea what <laughs> you need to put there. But yeah. do you teach guitar or do you play guitar, Paul? 
I can play a little bit of guitar, <laughs> not much, and flute. <laughs> oh, nice. Those yeah. are two opposite ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that is musicology. Does anybody have any questions there before we move on to Paul? Will you have a um, MIDI interface to the guitar as well? There are some MIDI guitars out there. Yeah, you know, somebody else had asked me about that. Um, it's definitely a feature that we would like to add, yes. Um, as well as making this um, playable too, so that, you know, you can place the dots on a certain string and then be able to strum it. Um, I have a question about when I'm using the metronome. I click it on and oftentimes I'll hear like a double click and I'm sure that's because they're, the sounds from both our computers are coming through at the same time. How do I eliminate that double click? Yeah, so that's, um, uh, it depends on the student's environment, like if they've got their volume turned up really loud and they're in an echoey room, then um, the audio is going to sound echoey just on the teacher's side uh, for the metronome. So you can eliminate that by them wearing a headphone or turning their volumes down, or you can just ignore it because it's only okay. on the teacher's side. Um, okay. And that's because the audio for the metronome is pushed from the student side to the teacher so that it's going to it's going to skip over any latency that um that you would hear if the metronome is just going on both sides so you're hearing exactly what they're clapping with and what they're hearing okay and Jackie, can um, you... oh sorry go ahead i'm sorry if you weren't finished go ahead uh, I had another question, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I just wanted her to demonstrate how to turn on and off the metronome again. Yeah. So you just press it and then slide it over. And then it'll... You click. just press what? You just press the, the metronome. Icon. Oh, okay. So it, it has it's green. to turn green. Yeah. Okay. And it automatically goes on at whatever the BPM is. Yeah. Yeah, it has to turn on. Then we've got like a cat sound. And it just, <laughs> Okay. Yeah, they're like, turn it off. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Thanks. Okay. It looks like for screen share, you know, I've tried screen share and I'm, I must be missing the quip time because they always say, um, you know, I click the world and, and, um, and, and, you know, all that business, but they say, oh, I just see a black screen. That must be because I haven't going into QuickTime yet. Is no, that's that because they're on an iPad. So screen share only works web app to web app. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't work going to the iPad um, at this point, uh, just because there is um, a code that we're missing from our the call line that we use. Okay. And um, it's just like Apple has a lot of restrictions. So there's a lot of extra coding restrictions that we have to work around. And okay. um, we're just uh, troubleshooting that right now. But yeah, right now it's just web app to web app. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. All right, Paul, are you ready? <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna introduce you to Paul. So Paul is um, the husband of a piano teacher that I met back in, I think it was April, April or May. Um, so they're very early adopters. Um, Paul came on the call. I was doing a webinar like this and he came on to make sure that I wasn't full of crap, I think. And <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm always um, helping Kathy. <laughs> he was helping his wife. He's a very helpful guy. Um, but Paul has worked in the IT industry for I think 16 over 16 years. With well, uh, IBM was I was at IBM for 14 years. I've been in it for over 40, so that tells you how old I am. <laughs> So he knows everything and he loves technology and he loves new technology and um, he's just uh, fantastic. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask him uh, a few little questions here. So Paul, some um, questions that a lot of teachers that ask me a lot, um, I would like to hear your answer. The first one is, what is an ideal internet speed for teaching online? That's a very good question. By the way, thank you for inviting me uh, to this presentation. Um, 
So it's, it's really interesting. Um, what is an ideal uh, speed for internet teaching online? A couple of things we need to understand. Um, certainly it depends on your existing internet speed, plus how many devices are online at the same time, and what are those devices doing? Um, uh, you know, if, if Kathy, my wife is here, or any of you are teaching uh, musicology class, uh, but you've got other children, uh, they all came home from school. Piano teachers typically start when everybody comes home from school. That means all the networks uh, uh, have increased uh, usage. So bandwidth is being used up. You know, if you have kids coming home and they're using video games or watching Netflix, uh, downloading whatever, blah, blah, that can have an effect on it. So um, the minimum speed requirement for video conferencing is one megabit per second. So one meg. That said, that's at the low end scale. And so we can have another uh, discussion about um, where you'd like to be and what you can get. But uh, I would say at the moment, um, it's a very difficult question to answer because it really depends on a number of other factors. Um, I'd like to make one other comment and that is this. Um, I, I hope everybody understands that um, if, if you're talking or doing video, uh, across the internet, which is what everybody's doing these days. Uh, there's a couple of things you really need to understand. If I send Rebecca uh, an email, let's say it takes five or 10 minutes to get there. She might not know the difference, but she's eventually going to get that email. Um, so we don't care if there's a delay there. But if I'm talking to her or I'm doing a video, we want to make sure that, that those packets, all information is in packets across the internet, we packetize everything, ones and zeros. We want to make sure that video and voice gets priority. So just some other things that you need to understand. I don't know if that's going to answer the question, but we'll carry on and then I can explain more. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I think for um, musicology, for the call provider that we use, the minimum requirements are um, an 18 download and like in a 10 upload or something <clears throat> at, at that speed, you're not going to get um, a very good experience uh, as well. And you're going to have to make sure that, you know, your, your um, device that you're using is not overloaded. It's not, um, it's been turned off recently. It's, you know, you're managing your storage and data. It's not like 10 years old. And right. um, yeah, I'd like what Paul said that other people aren't online at the same time because a, a lot of um, feedback that I get from people is that they do the Google internet speed test and it says um, it says your internet is good but the internet is like an an upload of four and a download of 14 or something yeah, right yeah. and Google says it's good but it's good for web browsing it's not good for video conferencing so it's always a good idea to go to something like speedtest.net and I think that's a little bit more accurate and then It'll also give you your ping as well, which is an important number for, for latency. Um, but what Paul mentioned was interesting about how all the kids come home from school and they all go on Netflix and YouTube, right? So if you're in a subdivision, um, this will overload the system too, won't it? It, it, it can. So um, everybody is in different geographies here. So where we are in Ontario, um, there's Bell and Rogers are kind of the two main ones. There's Kojikos and Shaw and some others. The difference is if it was Bell, they, they use a pair of wires like they always have with, with the modem on it. If it's Rogers, they're using coaxial cable. So here's one of the, the differences with Rogers uh, using coaxial cable. Everybody is kind of on that same wire. It's like a token ring. It's, it's one wire and everybody gets a piece of it. And it's, it's great uh, you know, because you're all connected, but more people go on and it slows down. And they've done modifications to uh, deal with that. And with Bell, the difference is you can get really high speeds, but the further you get away from the Bell office or where their, their, their box is, that speed will slow down. So um, those are just kind of interesting things to uh, understand. But the other thing is back to the speed test. One of the big things that everybody needs to understand is, um, and even with my corporate customers, I go to corporate customers and I ask them, uh, um, what are you paying for? What are you paying for a download and an upload? And a lot of them don't know. So um, what I recommend, 
what Rebecca and I recommend is that make sure you understand um, what your debt, what you're paying for, for a download and upload, what type of service you've got, and then do the speedtest.net and see what you're getting. So um, you let's just say you're getting, I, I get almost a gig download and 50 meg upload. You really, the, the, the download's the big one that you want, but also you want some upload as well. Um, you're never gonna get, if you, if you say you're getting a gig down and 50 meg up, you're not gonna see that on a speedtest.net. It's gonna be a little bit less or more or less uh, because there's some, um, they, 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 they do things. There's uh, other things that the system uses. So what you do is, what, you're, what are you paying for? And then what are you getting? And if there's a significant difference, then you need to say, I got a problem, what is it? Now it could be on the Rogers or Bell side, or it could be on your side. And that's some of the other things that we're gonna talk about. So understand exactly what you're paying for, and then try to then, then do the speed test and see what you're getting and go from there. Yeah, that's, that's all. Yes. There are people down here, I live in a large community. Um, who, who are using something called an internet extender, I think it's called. Well, uh, okay. Are you, are you aware of those? Do you know what yeah. they are? Or well, there's all, there's all kinds of things. So I need to understand exactly what that, an internet extender, is it, is it a, a wireless device that uh, is in your house? Or is it something uh, out on the street that the, uh, the, the provider is doing? No, I think it's something that gets installed in your house. Yeah. Hey, 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 give me two seconds here. It just so happens I have one of these things here that I'm not <laughs> using. <laughs> okay. Does it does it look something like that? Yeah, probably. I mean, okay. I don't know that I've personally seen them. I've just seen people's comments on Facebook that they're yeah. using this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So well, I'm going to go on a little bit more, Rebecca, then. Yeah, here, we're going to get into it here. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, teaching at home um, is really a great thing because you're not paying for uh, um, a business facility, uh, extra, extra, extra. So you're doing it all at home. And what you want to make sure, what is the best network for a piano teacher at home? And I'm not a big fan of these devices. Uh, so uh, there's, there's more... Um, wireless access, this is really just a wireless access point at the end of the day, they call it an extender. So you've got Wi-Fi, and then they add these on and the one Wi-Fi talks to this one. And if it's close to where you're teaching, this is what it is. But for what you uh, piano teachers for musicology are using, I don't really recommend this. Um, and I'd also say this, um, there's some of these uh, extenders that the uh, providers are, are are giving you or not even they're charging you ten dollars per i don't know what you know have a look at your bill everybody must understand your internet and your phone bill but your internet bill and what am i paying for because it varies all over the place what is your speed and what are the devices and, and do they have these things some of the other extenders are little they're like little circles and you plug them into an outlet and oh, isn't it wonderful? But they're getting another $40 a month off you if you've got four of them. Um, I do have a recommendation and I'll give it to uh, Rebecca and she can send it out to you. But um, my number one recommendation is if you can connect an ethernet cable, right? One of these, it's ethernet is also cat five or category five. 5e or cat 6 it's one of these cables everybody understands what these are right um, if you can connect from your rogers or bell modem right into your computer where you're teaching that is the best if you can stay away from wi-fi wi um, i would recommend it um, if you can't then make sure you've got a very good wireless access point in your house i have one i just put it in i took out my my mesh network that I had, and I put this one in, and it hasn't crashed on me yet, and it's been working extremely well. So uh, again, understanding network, it can be a really uh, big challenge. I'd also say if somebody bought a 200 foot uh, ethernet cable, uh, terrific. Um, the length 
that you can have on any ethernet cable, cat five or cat six is 300 feet. So uh, you wouldn't be able to get a cable a a over 300 feet, but just, just to let you know. Anyway, I, I don't hope that gives you some idea. Of Thank you very much. About. You're welcome. You okay. answered question number three, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, you, you know, so yeah, fair enough. So just a quick thing about um, question number three, which was what is an ideal setup for online teaching? Um, the, the, the carriers and the telcos, and I've seen this over the years, uh, uh, do a very good job of trying to confuse customers about what things are and what your bills mean. So you, you get, I got a modem, I've got a router, I've got Wi-Fi, I've got an extender, uh, mesh pods, all these kinds of things. So the, in general terms, the modem is, and the router are the same thing, one box. Uh, you could have a network switch where you plug all these things in, that's another one. But what you really want is you'll have a, a modem slash router and it will have Wi-Fi uh, capability. Um, and, and I'm not even a fan of the Wi-Fi off of their own modem. If you can get your, your router and put in uh, one of these uh, wireless access points that uh, Rebecca and I will recommend to you, um, it, it's amazing, and it's been very good for, for what we've been doing here. I hope that helps. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah, for me, my router is up on the, the second floor in the middle of my house, so I don't have an option for an Ethernet cable, but um, I'm looking forward to getting the device that you recommended. I have pods right now, but they have to be positioned correctly, and then God forbid if the hydro goes out and you have to reset everything again, <laughs> they're a big pain well, in the ass. <laughs> right, fair enough. So, so you bring up another point. So these pods, people will plug them into uh, a wall outlet, right? Think of think of wireless access points as as a uh, the light in your room, right? You want the best light, and it, I'm going to say it shines. It doesn't shine. It's it's wireless, right? But it transmits somewhat this way. When it's down low or in your basement, um, um, that's not a good spot. Uh, so if you've got a bungalow, you, you'd want that uh, wireless device at least on in the main floor. Uh, you might not want it up on the second. If you've got a two-story house, you would want maybe one on the first floor and one on the second floor. And if you're teaching on the second floor, then you, you would certainly want one up there as well. I hope that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? You know, those, oh. you need to have that, yes. Is the wireless device that you're referring to the same thing as the router and the modem, or is it something separate? Uh, uh, the wireless device is is something separate. Uh, not now. That being said, um, the modem slash router does have wireless capability, but uh, it's it's not as good as a uh, as the one that uh, Rebecca and I are going to recommend. Because the one that we have right now, I mean, of all the ones that I've ever used, this one has been terrific. And they're only 250, 300 bucks. And trust me, if, if you're paying $10 for these pods and you can get out of it and put one of these in for a one time, you're way ahead of the game, trust me. Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm paying like a monthly fee for pods, two of them, and they're 16 bucks each. There you go. So if you can get off of it, um, to my mind, that would be a very good thing to do. Yeah. So Susan, the router. Paul, like... No, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just had a question because we're in a rural situation. We are looking at uh, possibly using Starlink as a provider. Yep, fair um, do you have any experience with that? Uh, so, yes. So a couple of things. So uh, Starlink is Elon Musk. And what he's done is He's providing a service now that is a real game changer uh, because people can't get very good internet in the, the uh, rural areas. And any of the, I live in Barrie and I service anywhere. If, if you, most of these people know Ontario, Barrie, Muskoka's, Bracebridge, Gravenhurst, all those, even more north. Anybody I've ever talked to up there is that they've already signed up for it. Whether they've got it yet or not is another thing. Uh, but I, I would certainly recommend Starlink. Uh, and, and, you know, if you don't have it, um, you can order it. It's probably going to be a few months before you, you get it, but it's going to be, uh, it's going to grow and grow and grow and pr provide uh, 
a very good service for you to be able to teach piano at your cottage. <laughs> That's what people are doing. Is that I don't need to live in Toronto anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to move out to the country. I'm going to move out to my cottage and this is where I'm going to work. And if you had a piano at your cottage and good internet for Starlink, you could do that as well. Yeah. And I think that Apple's M1 We're on the planning on um, connecting with Starlink as well. So that sure. you can be on like international waters on a cruise ship and just get your internet from space. Yeah, yeah, it'll be amazing. Wow. Yeah, the, uh, the the Starlink. Room we're on the gonna... list. We're just waiting. Yeah, whereabouts are you? Um, we're actually on the four hundred one corridor between Windsor and London, but oh, okay. we're on a rural area, so we're we're on old bell lines that are old, old, old. So our service right. is horrible. Right, right. So, so here's another thing. Um, and again, you know, if you want your students to have a good experience, and, and we all want you to have a good experience with your students. Um, so I was talking about copper, whether it was the tip and ring from Bell or coaxial from Rogers. Yes, you can do uh, Starlink. The other thing that you can do is look for is is fiber, and um, and fiber is really now it's not uh, electrical, it's light impulses that go across. And it's it's absolute game changer. If you can get fiber in your house, you're never gonna have a problem with, uh, I shouldn't say never, have a problem with the internet, but you're gonna have a terrific internet pipe coming into your house. And if I could, I, don't, I can't get it here, but if I could get it, I'd pay for it in a heartbeat and wouldn't even think about it. So, uh, and, and, and the government is investing billions of dollars in upgrading infrastructure in all kinds of areas. They see what's going on with Starlink and now they're putting money in to compete against it, but it's all gonna take time. I still believe that internet um, is not where it can be, but it's growing and it's gonna get there eventually. Yeah. Many so of the companies in Chatham is, are investing in that, but in our local rural, it will be years, I'm afraid. So that's why we signed up for the satellite. So we're just waiting. Yeah, yeah, no, I think Thank it's you. a it's a very it's a very good thing to do. If you're in that area, I certainly recommend the Starlink, uh, and I'd be interested to know how it works for you. But anyway, there you go. So, can you tell yeah. us what um what does upload, download, and ping mean in layman's terms? Uh, sure. So, um, what what ping means is um, if you ping or you're trying to ping another device. What you're doing is, is testing it to see if you have gotten a connection. That's it. You know, uh, at the end of the day, everything that we're on right now, I've got an IP address, Rebecca does, Beth, Sherry, Pam, these are the names that I see right now. Um, so if I can, you know, you, you would go to a DOS prompt and you'd go ping and you would ping someone else's address. And, and if you get a response, it means you're communicating. If you don't, then there's a problem. There's no internet connection. That's really what it means. So it's like uh, the the um, the way that I it was explained to me was it was based off of um, submarine technology and sonar waves and the, the speed of sound. You know the ping ping of a submarine, but now it's oh. the speed of light. Right. So, um, and you're exactly right. So one of the things you get with um, ping is you, you get um, uh, the time delay. So this is the other thing that's important uh, with, um, with voice and video is you want to have less latency. They call it latency. So if, if quite frankly, I'm talking to you right now, you're probably not, I'm saying it now, and it's probably a few seconds before you actually hear it. Although I must say, when you have a product like Musicology versus Zoom, and we're on Zoom right now, uh, but when you have a product like Musicology uh, using their video conferencing platform, it's actually better than the, the free Zooms. And when you start paying for it, you get better video and audio capability. And that goes with, with any of these what they call uh, communication and collaboration systems. So uh, the other thing that you're asking is about a download and upload speeds. And I think everybody has a pretty good uh, sense of it, you know? So A, download. So uh, I, wanna, I wanna watch, let's use Netflix. I wanna watch a, a movie on Netflix. All I really need is the download. I wanna make sure that, that I'm getting a good download speed. All I'm doing to upload is 
I'm, I'm accessing my name and password and I'm clicking to go, I wanna watch this movie or this show or whatever. So I'm not doing a lot of upload, but download, I wanna, I wanna have a good download. And uh, Netflix does some other things that I think are, are, are very good too. And that is if, if you log into a, a movie it doesn't do it necessarily uh, live. What it'll do is it'll start downloading and it might download five or 10 minutes of that, that movie so that even if you lost your internet, it would still carry on. So if you lost it for a second, you're not gonna get jitter or stoppage or anything like that and it'll come back on again. I hope that makes sense. Uh, you know. so, so the download is the information, if I'm teaching, the download is the information that my student is sending to me and the upload is the information I'm sending to my student. Correct. Yes, that's correct. And then and, the ping and, is the measurement to, that uh, is allowing us to send that information. Yeah, the, the ping, the ping uh, proves that there's a connection and it'll also tell you what what the delay is, you know. And I'm not I'm not really too worried about ping right at the moment for for what we're doing here. Download and upload is important. Is 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 there anybody here that knows if they've got fiber in their uh, uh, on their system? Does anybody have fiber? You do. You do. So what's what's your up and down? Rebecca? Oh, it's like crazy. It's like four hundred down and like three hundred up or something. Yeah. So if you notice with the fiber, uh, it's a lot closer for the upload and, and, and a download and the upload, but for the other ones, it's it's a greater download and a, a much lesser upload, which typically you don't need, but uh, for the, the uh, musicology environment or anybody doing voice and video, uh, you want it to be uh, a little bit, you want it to be higher. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. And again, I think it's important that everybody checks and sees what am I paying for? So what is my download? What is my upload? Uh, and then then do a speedtest.net to see, match it with that. And then, and then you can sort of determine, you know what, I need to do a few things. One of the other things that I've seen, and it's even happened in our network, I'm constantly doing things here, but as technology changes uh, and speeds change, um, you need to do things like, well, I've had that modem slash router in for five or six years, let's do an upgrade. Call, call the telco and say, look, I need a new one here. And maybe you've already done that. Secondly, um, you know, are you using old patch cables? Some of those patch cables, and they're, they're relatively inexpensive, uh, you know, but if, if you're using patch cables, have a look at them. If they say Cat5, go to Cat5e or Cat6, and that might help make a difference. So a patch cable is just the cable that's plugging well, in yeah. your router to the Oh, the Ethernet the, cable. Yeah, patch cable is oh. an Ethernet cable. Yes. Okay. Right. That's what it is. Right. So everything, you know, what are the speeds? Right. Okay. Um, any, uh, well, you had some other questions here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> we got had a little. That's okay. Flip. Um, yeah, so what can somebody do to maintain their device? And this is actually a good question because Sherry just said, my Mac is 2013. Do I need a new one? Um, so, uh, and I like Mac, uh, I really do. Uh, so one of the things uh, that uh, Apple does, you can, uh, you know, if you go to your Mac device and you look at my, mine just went on sleep. You go to your Mac and you hit the far left and there's an Apple there, it'll say about, and it'll tell you uh, the software version and you can look at it and see. Um, so some of the older versions in 2013 is certainly getting on. It's amazing that they're still doing so well with those versions, but there are some things that it can't do. And uh, I would, you know, I would say, you know, uh, if, if it's really giving you a hard time, it's time to upgrade your Mac and get something more current. And you might not necessarily have to buy brand new, but I would recommend uh, nothing less than a year or two years old because you're going to have it for another five or six years anyway. I mean, this is where technology is going. It's constantly but actually, changing. It's probably a good time, I think, now to if you are thinking of upgrading to upgrade your Apple products because they have the M1 chip and it is super fast. Like it is flying. It has no, no delay at all. It's crazy. Yeah. 
Yeah, I bought um, Kathy uh, the, a brand new iPad 12 uh, for musicology. She's and she's got her her laptop, but um, you know, again, uh, and, and not only of that, even with the, the the older versions. So that's the the hardware version. Then there's the software. And if you look at it, it's uh, High Sierra and uh, um, and I forget the name of the other ones, but there's they give them names like that. Uh, Elfina, uh, uh, <laughs> exactly, exactly. So uh, understand the version that you've got. And uh, there are some things that will limit you if it's a 2013. And again, uh, I, I agree with Rebecca, it's, it's time to upgrade. I don't sell yeah. all devices, but there I'm not able to upgrade past Mojave because uh, of my software. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's probably a good indication I need to get a new Mac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, a year or two old, I mean, uh, you know, I like Best Buy. I mean, I, if you're going to buy something like that, I would go right to a dealer and uh, like Best Buy. Uh, Canada Computers is another one, but uh, Best Buy is probably a very good one. And you can go to, if, you can, if there's an Apple store around, go there and uh, get yourself a good device, a brand new one. That's that's really a good thing. Well, if I wanted to buy used, uh, do I go on eBay or? Um... Uh, I, I don't use eBay. Uh, you can even go on Amazon and look it up there and see it. Um, I wouldn't recommend, um, uh, I like buying and selling things on Facebook Marketplace, but for computers like that, I wouldn't recommend it. That way, if you've got a problem, you can take it back to the store or someone like that, you know. If someone you know and trust, fine. And you can buy used ones from Best Buy. Uh, Best Buy. They have refurbished yeah. ones. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you know that you're getting something that's uh, not, you know, too used. Mm -hmm. They're going to yeah. refurbish. Sometimes you can trade in your old devices too for a small amount. And Apple, you can get, don't they, they have refurbished on the Apple store. That's how I got my iPad. Yeah, either they do for sure. Yeah, exactly yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, uh, they're only refurbished because someone sent it back for where I don't care about a scratch on the back of it. You don't want it on the screen for sure, but you, you know, certainly you want to make sure that you can have the latest software and, and obviously the speeds and those kinds of things as well. well so, can I, Paul, can I ask you a question about, um, about ethernet cable? I yes. have ethernet cable on my iPad, sorry, on my laptop. Is it possible to get an Ethernet cable that you can connect to your iPad as well? Uh, yes, there is. Um, this isn't exactly the one, but um, and I have I, it's on Kathy's computer, so it's a little it's a little device. Oh, um, Rebecca, you've got one there. Yeah, I've got one. Yeah, yeah, she's got one. So you plug it into a port in the back of your the side of your computer. There you go, and then you would plug. Uh, the cable that I've been showing you into uh, Rebecca's uh, uh, device there, and they're probably thirty-five dollars. And okay. for 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 you uh, here, I would absolutely recommend it. if you can plug an Ethernet cable from your computer right into your modem, right? Uh, you then you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi. I have two two cables for mine, so I have the Ethernet cable. And it's the Ethernet on one end and then the USB here. And then I have to plug it into this other because Apple loves adapters. <laughs> plug it into another adapter for the yeah. USB C for my iPad Pro. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what I need. I already have an Ethernet cable on my laptop that I teach from, but sometimes I teach from the, the iPad and I don't have that connected to. And so what's that's great what on the Apple about. Store too? If you go directly on the App Store or the Apple Store um, and you look up, accessories it'll say compatible with your devices yeah okay. and, and just on a side note i would i would recommend getting an apple adapter not a third party mm -hmm. i just find sometimes you're just wasting your money they they sometimes totally. they kind of wear out or whatever but uh that's been my experience so if you can get it's not a lot of money like honestly when you look at uh what you're doing spending the money for a, a, a good internet a proper computer, it's, uh, you know, um, you'll have the right internet, all those things, you'll be able to teach without any problems. You really should be able to do that without yeah, any problems. Yeah. I'm, I'm lucky. I'm in near, near Vancouver. My internet's and I, we have the, we have the, the fiber optic cable here. So my, my internet speed is, is really right. good. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I, I, I think that's the test. I think everybody should send a note back to Rebecca and say, I, I checked my, 
my internet and my download is this. Uh, this is what I'm paying for download upload. And I did a speed test and this is what it is, you know? Yeah, I, just, I just checked mine and my download is 681 and my upload is 713. Yeah, yeah. There's no problem with you, Colleen. That's, that's, yeah. you're good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there um, you go. The last question, Paul, is um, what is the biggest change you noticed with the rise of the technological era and what can we expect moving forward? Well, um, I think we've already talked about Elon Musk because I have some notes here and that was one. So we've talked about it. And you do understand that 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 what Elon Musk is doing, he's putting satellites around the globe, you know. I, I like technology and I can not like it sometimes too. It would be nice if we didn't have all these things floating around, uh, you know, the earth and the planet earth. However, we're not going to get away from it. Uh, so there it is. The fact of the matter is that's how they've done it. To me, I kind of look at it like telephone poles in the sky. <laughs> that's where they've gone. So you, you get better coverage. I, I think one of the other big things is uh, the fiber versus copper. If you can get fiber to Colleen's point and Rebecca, they've got it. Uh, if you can get fiber, I would certainly recommend uh, getting fiber. And eventually it's, it's gonna go that way, but be very careful. Um, I called uh, Rogers and, uh, and, and, and Bell uses a term called FIBE, F-I-B-E. And it's, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting fiber. It's a terminology that you use, they use and it's very misleading. And you ask them, so is, is it light impulses or electrical impulses? And if it's not light, they won't even be able to answer it. But anyway, I don't want to get too too technical, but you understand what I'm saying. Marketing it's fluff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, it really is. It really is quite quite the, uh, uh, the marketing fluff. Um, I, I wanted to make another suggestion because one of the things, and Kathy experienced this here. Now, the fact is, I've got about 40 devices in the house. And I've got Alexa and all kinds of, I gotta be careful saying her name cause she'll come on. <laughs> but, um, and I can turn lights on and off. So, so I've got a lot of stuff on here, but right now, since I, I put in my new wireless access point, it's been working great. But if you're having trouble communicating someone on the, uh, uh, your, one of your students, right? Um, one of the things that you can do in a pinch, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Rebecca, but um, just have them, do the video with them, but have them call you and, and on a cell phone or your home phone and talk to them that way. That way you're, you're, you're not using as much bandwidth, right, uh, on the internet, if you understand what I mean. Uh, and, and I've had Kathy do that. They would call on her, her cell phone and she put on the, the headphones and do it that way. So there are some simple fixes just to get you past the point of, uh, okay, I can still communicate and this is how we do it, right? Yeah. Um, Susan is asking, she has an issue with her camera shutting down on the laptop. Um, she doesn't want to take everyone else's time, but would love to know if you have any thoughts for what might be causing it. The stop video gets a line through it without my, my initiating it. Uh, well, so again, uh, yeah, how did this, it... the screen freezes too. And, and then these lines kind of go on the front of my screen and it's been happening in Zoom. It only happened once in Musicology. I actually bought a new camera, uh, a cam, and yeah. I have that. I'm using that instead of the camera in the computer. It's a Lenovo. Um, and again, I don't want to take everybody's time on this, but it's driving me crazy. And I tried to call about, you know, getting an answer to this. And I'm going to have to spend money, of course, for somebody to look at it and troubleshoot my computer. and. Do you have any thoughts? Sure, I do. A um, couple of things. A, um, how good is your internet? So, you know, let's answer these questions, right? I think it's really a great point. And not only how good is your uh, uh, internet, but how good is your student or somebody else that you're, you're doing a call with? Um, well, it's happened you know. already on this call. And by the way, my husband teaches online and he never has any problems. So it uh, is something to do with my computer, my device. What, what is your what is your husband teaching? Is he a, is he a, another piano teacher or is he doing? Uh, he teaches uh, at, online as an adjunct professor and goes through whatever that system is called at most colleges. What's it called? Canvas. Canvas. But he Canvas? uses Zoom right. within Canvas. 
Yeah. yeah. He so, never has any problem. But, but, and again, he, the, the university or the school that he's with may be uh, paying uh, a fee for that and get, he's getting a better service. This is the problem with free things. They're free, but they're not as, they're not as good. That's why musicology, I believe is better is because uh, you know, it, you're getting a better uh, video rates. But one of the things that I've seen my wife do, you're not on the call, are you, honey? <laughs> um, she will have, you know, um, other tabs open on Chrome and she'll have the email open and other things. If you're going to teach, shut everything down and and maybe, you know, at the beginning of the week, reboot your computer, uh, you know, get remove things from the, the cache and, and get started. Um, and if that doesn't do it, then, you know, you need, how old is your computer? How old is your computer, Susan? I'm not sure. When yeah. How, how long have you had it for? A few years? Oh, yeah, at least. Probably yeah, at least yeah. maybe five. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing that, that, you know, five years and they are still working well, but sometimes that's the issue, mm -hmm. you know. But so, I just uh, thought maybe like there's a bad port or maybe there's a driver, like that there was something specific that could be causing this because otherwise it works fine. But no, um, and uh, I would, you know, if you think it's a bad cord, generally not. Sometimes the ports, you know, uh, if there's another port that you can plug in, it's a USB port, try another one. I, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that that's what it is. You can blow is. them out with that pressurized air too. Might mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not a bad idea. But uh, typically, uh, typically it's it's going to be uh, the age of your computer or your, your internet itself. The, and the fact that Again, the fact that you and your husband are both teaching online at the same time means that the requirement for voice and video has now been doubled because that means both you and him are going in and those packets need to go back and forth this happens, instantaneously. This happens when we are not both teaching at the same time. It also happens when I'm on the Ethernet cable. Yeah, it sounds to me like you, and I'm not an IT guy, but it sounds to me like maybe it, um, your computer is just a little bit out of date. Maybe it's kind of seen better days. I would try like sort of managing its its storage and like what Paul says, clearing your cache and turning it off and on again. Yeah. Yeah, okay. check the storage level in it because it just might not be performing what it used to be. CPU you, you know, yeah, no, you're exactly right. Exactly right. Um, you, you know, there's the other thing too, you know, if your storage, sometimes the storage shouldn't affect what you're doing live, but uh, um, uh, any of your files, everybody should be moving to the cloud for files and stuff where they store, don't store them on your computer. Imagine if you were to uh, lose your computer or it just got wiped out for whatever reason and all your data was on there. And I'm sure a lot of you are already doing cloud. Um, but make sure that you're, you're doing that as well. And so that's one of the other things I think I, I would certainly recommend. Cloud, that's where it's at right now. It's amazing how those chips, those chips are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And not only are they getting smaller, they're able to, to, to take in more and more and more information. And not only are they able to do that, they're putting them into these data centers that are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It just goes to show you the amount of information that we're, there's storage information and then there's the live information, what we're doing right now, or, you know, the musicology, et cetera, things like that. So, um, you know, chips are, you know, new chips is probably a good thing because that will certainly affect uh, the speed. You know, I'll say this, um, uh, you know, Kat, I laugh, you know, you've got, You've got your, your plumbing coming into your house and you've got your hydro coming into your house. And now you've got your internet coming into the house. And you know, you don't yell down, hey, honey, can you reboot the plumbing? <laughs> there's no water coming out of the tap. Or do you say, hey, honey, can you reboot the hydro? There, there's no hydro today. It doesn't happen, but we're doing it with, with the, the internet. We do it with our computers and we do it with that. And I, I really believe that in very short order, it's going to be, might be another few more years, five to 10, but, but, but that's where it's going to be. You don't need anything analog. It's going to be an internet pipe coming in your house that's presumably fiber, very high speeds, and it's, it's going to be really be a game changer. And we're going through that process right now, and uh, you just have to manage it as best you can. So, so keep everything up to date is the point. To Rebecca's point, maybe your computer's a little bit old, upgrade it. 
um, check your cables, uh, upgrade those. If you had your modem for a while, ca call the uh, your provider and say, uh, I'm having a trouble. It might take you an hour because by the time you get on the phone with them uh, and get through to somebody, but it's, it's certainly <laughs> worth it. Here's another tip. You can always say, I'm, I'm thinking about going to the other guy. They might even give you a discount. Trust me, it works quite well. <laughs> I, I'd like to speak to retentions, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Rebecca knows. Rebecca knows. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to see if I had any more notes. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so well, thank uh, yeah. you, Paul. This is like, okay. it's been so yeah, helpful. Somebody helpful. just said, we need to do this every month with Paul. Oh, yay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, you didn't know what you were getting yourself into. I'm going to have no, to give I, your wife a free membership or something. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know, so, you know something, I'll tell you, uh, I'm a sales guy and, and I sell cloud uh, VoIP phone systems and camera systems and all the rest of it. But I've been selling uh, for a lot of years and I've, I've been technician and technical as well. And I don't like free because I don't think you get anything for free. I want to pay for something. And uh, that, that's really my opinion. And I think right now, uh, the, the Musicology app is a terrific app. I got to say, and, and I'll, I'll finish up with this. I'll let you finish up. So I was selling uh, video communication and collaboration, Cisco WebEx, the Zoom type products pre-COVID. And I would get on calls with our executives at IBM and Cisco and, and customers. And we would do these calls where we had the video capability and no one was using it. I'd go, guys, how do we sell this stuff if we're not going to use it? And people, oh, I don't want to go on the camera. I don't want people to see me, right? And as and, uh, soon as COVID hit, bang. Kathy was on it and all you ladies, and I know there's a couple of men on here, at least one anyway that I heard, are using this app and you have risen to the top of the technology scale past all these guys that think they're so smart in the technology industry. And, and not only that, Rebecca's Musicology app is, is quite frankly better than some of these other apps because it and it's it's niche and it's specific to teaching uh piano and theory right and you've got it uh, and i think that you've put yourself in a position i say this to anybody i talk to i think it's terrific and and it's it's taught everybody that we need this of course all the other companies are going to you know work at home and we're going to give you these apps and there's a bunch of them there but rebecca you are uh, you're a real uh forerunner and i i think it's terrific i really do it's Thank you, you, you should be proud i really mean that thank you thank you well thank you to everybody and like so many thanks to paul like you are just amazing i think you really helped out a lot of people today and i'm going to um re-watch this and write a few tips down and submit a blog and um a letter to send to students as well and hopefully that'll help you guys with your online teaching and for any new teachers here that are interested in using Musicology, you can use the code um, web app for um, a little discount off your first month. And um, I'm open to speaking anytime. And thank you. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank, thank you, you, everybody. So thank you, Rebecca. Take care. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.